Welcome to Play Connect. I'm your host, Craig Sullivan. How are you today? Hey, we have a new industry leader joining us today, but before we bring him out, I would like to thank our good friends at Red Roof Franchising for being our production partner on this show. You looking for a new brand? Give our friend Matt Hostedler a call. He and his team can help you. They've got a new extended stay uh, brand that is doing great. They've got a new prototype for that. They've got their economy, and they've also got a soft brand. So if you've got a little boutique hotel, give them a call. You know, you're looking for a res system that can help you? Give them a call. Please let uh, our good friend Matt know that producer Danny and I sent you over there. So now it is a great honor and a pleasure to welcome Ted Torres of Creed. He is a managing director, and that is Commercial Real Estate Development Enterprise. And we're talking hotel. We're going to talk about other commercial real estate. Ted, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, Craig, I am fantastic. I'm uh, I'm surviving the Scottsdale summer heat, but uh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's been a fantastic year for uh, commercial real estate, uh, the hotel business in general, and uh, I am very excited to be here and uh, be on the show. Oh, uh, we're we're really appreciative that you're here, and you know. We got to spend a little time together and have some great conversations at the hospitality show that Hotel Management Magazine and AHLA put on. And it was such a pleasure, you know, being able to have those conversations with you there. It was like, this is a no brainer. Let's get Ted on Click Connect. So thank you very, very much. Absolutely. My pleasure to be here, Craig. Thank you for inviting me on. Definitely. Ted, would you do me a favor and please tell the audience about yourself and Creed, please? Uh, yeah, of course, Craig. Uh, uh, my name, again, is Ted Torres, uh, based in Scottsdale, Arizona, managing director and, and one of the partners in, uh, as you said, commercial real estate development enterprises, or Creed. Uh, our corporate headquarters are based in Irvine, California, and we are a, uh, a full-service uh, development advisory construction management firm uh, that specializes in all commercial asset classes, uh, and specifically for, for me, I head up the hospitality group within the company, uh, have been in the industry over 35 years, uh, been an owner, franchisee, developer, consultant, uh, you name it during all that time. Uh, so, you know, the hotel group and uh, what we're doing right now is uh, we're excited about it. A uh, lot of work in the industry to be done. And, uh, you know, we're very, very happy to be here. Yeah, that's a great transition to a firm that is national you mm -hmm. can help you know our hotel community out you know from coast to coast uh, so i'm really liking that so let's let's talk about pips let's go there first due to the transactional change in ownership or lender receivership and subsequent buy sells all the brands have become very very cognizant of their pips and they want them done they're not giving anybody any latitude really at this point. So what are you seeing out there for PIPs? Uh, well, what we're seeing, Craig, is, uh, is like, like you said, the, the brands have become very, very stringent. They are uh, right now, uh, you know, the, the extension period uh, due, to, uh, due to COVID has been, you know, effectively uh, uh, eliminated. So all of the brands are being very stringent. Uh, they've all come up with uh, uh, newer versions of their prototypes, uh, newer color schemes, uh, essentially new refresh to all of their existing brands, whether it be select serve or full serve. Uh, and so with that, uh, you know, any change of ownership or any refresh, uh, they are being very, very stringent on the requirements. Uh, they're not giving the typical 12 to 18 month extensions. Uh, they are really going after the brands right now to keep and maintain them and keep the freshness. Uh, factor of what those hotels are, which, you know, it, it can be a little bit painful on the on the hotel owners. Uh, but at the same time, it keeps the integrity of the brand intact. And also, you know, it um, uh, it helps, with, you know, it helps with consumer preference uh, because that's what the brands are all about. The brands want consumer preference. Uh, they want fresh and clean hotels. Um, and they're uh, asking and now expecting their franchisees to be able to deliver on that. And you know, that's part of what we at Creed do is we have a tremendous specialty working with a lot of large players in the industry right now doing significant renovations for them on large scale hotel assets, smaller scale hotel assets, whether it be economy or extended stay or, or resort or luxury. We're involved in 
in PIP renovations in, in all of those uh, asset classes and verticals. Uh, and like you said, we're national. We're in 34 states. Uh, we're from Hawaii to the Carolinas down into Florida, and we're actually doing a couple of projects also uh, in Mexico and the Caribbean. So we have a, a very, very good understanding of construction costs, uh, as well as uh, timeframes, timelines, uh, sourcing of materials, um, uh, everything that goes into that. Nice. Now, escalating costs, that's going to be actually the, the other part of this question. Mm -hmm. what, you know, good broker and seller, you know, they've already got that, that, that sales pip ordered. And a lot of times it's already in by the time they open up escrow. What are you hearing from buyer and seller? Is there a little bit of sticker shock going on with that? Are, there, are they trying to retrade the, uh, the seller on the pricing? What's happening there? You're also an advisor. Right. Well, I, well, I think what's happening is is there's still uh, there's still a, a buyer seller uh, a disconnect in terms of the bid ask. So, you know, what what we have tried to do is to assist and help our clients on that bid ask side is is take a look at what the what the scope of the PIP renovation is, um, and then also take a look at what any deferred maintenance because the brands don't really focus on uh, you know the back of house components. They don't they don't focus on really the most expensive components of a building, which are your, your mechanical systems, your electrical systems, your plumbing systems. Um, and what we as a company have gone in and, and do do for our clients uh, uh, pro bono is we'll go in and take a look and do a very deep dive inspection on all of those systems and, and take a look at the, uh, you know, the current, um, uh, you know, both the current status of those systems, uh, the age, the, the useful life of those systems, yeah. uh, if it's uh, if it's repair versus replace. And then we identify that for our clients who could be either buyer or seller and give them the reality of, OK, here's the length of life and term on this. And here's what the cost factor is going to be. But more importantly than that is, you know, what's the lead time? How can we help you bring those lead times down and try to bring those cost factors more in check with different means and methods? Um, you know, and that's that's again an, an area where we have really, really dug in uh, because in in terms of construction, technology is to, is changing in terms of construction as well, and with those technological changes, different systems come in play, um, and you know many times those systems can be used uh, for the benefit of our clients. So we, uh, you know, we're, we're able to help assist in those so that maybe the sticker shock is not, you know, eight to ten percent versus last year. Maybe the sticker maybe it comes down to four to five percent. Now, <clears throat> I think it's a definite value add. And I know when you know, we've bought hotels in the past that, you know, I want somebody to go through everything. It, it's all the mechanicals. It's the roof. You know, it's the IT. And if it's going from an, an indie hotel to a branded one, you know, do I have to replace the entire IT system? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, right. You know, just coming in as a buyer. So I think that's that's a value add. And if you've got that in-depth survey done and knowledge and understanding, that's going to help that whole transition go a whole lot better. Oh, no, no, no question, Craig. And that, that's the uh, that's the value of our company is, you know, with with 160 experts within our company nice. working in virtually all of the major markets, you know, we can go in you know, with some of our team members who have 20, 30, 40 years of experience, and yep. they can really ascertain and give a, a good, clean, you know, cost factor as to what that's going to take. And, and more importantly than that, too, is not just the cost factor, but it's the availability on a replacement of that equipment. You know, things like uh, uh, chilling systems, cooling towers, yep. uh, electrical switch gear, those all have very, very long lead items. And we've been able to source, you know, alternate replacement sources that instead of it being the 52, 54, 56 week nightmare that we hear, we've been able to get, you know, a lot of our projects up and going in, in 12 to 16 weeks for our clients, which, you know, right. if you have a $50 million loan and you can't open for nine months because you can't get your switch gear, well, you're paying a lot in interest payments and reserve on that versus having to pay a little bit more on the front end to be able to ensure you get that equipment. And we've been able to overcome those challenges and assist our clients. You know, uh, and and that's going to lead us down into another rabbit hole that I like to to find out about. What's lead times like on things? I uh, mean, you know, let's say you've got you know 140 key select service hotel or extended stay, and all the P tax have to be replaced. 
Um, I went through that with one of 125, you know, it was, it was a pill that you know, it was a tough pill to swallow, but you know, exactly. it had to be done. You know, what's, what are your lead times like? That's got to well, be. P, well, PTAC yeah. replacement, yeah. PTAC replacement is, isn't as severe. PTAC replacement is generally somewhere around 20 weeks, uh, yeah. depending on, depending on the size of the order and, and who the manufacturer is that you go with. Um, and in many cases, you know, a, a lot of our valuable resources come out of Mexico, uh, with with the maquilador that, that's right. down there, you know what a lot of what a lot of industry folks don't realize is is for virtually every American manufacturer, every American name that you have, there are there are uh, facilities and factories in Mexico in, in all 26 states yeah. that are actually doing the manufacturing process and able to get those up and and operational and functional to us. So we we've been able to bring those those factors down, but also the other factor that we're looking at, not just on that equipment, but let's say Let's say it's a full-blown renovation. You yeah. know, Southeast Asia has 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 been a challenge in terms of you know timing and timeliness to be able to get materials to us. Uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's Chinese factories, there's great unknowns on Chinese factories. We've always had to deal with Chinese New Year. Uh, a lot of a lot of our uh, uh, procurement uh, companies that we work with uh, have gone to Vietnam, but then you have to realize the factors of well, is it a Chinese-owned Vietnamese factory, which the Vietnamese are burning down? Or is it a Vietnamese owned factory, which the locals have, and then you can go there? Or, you know, in some cases, you know, we've presented the alternate to our clients where, okay, here's the cost factor to get all of your FF and E. It's going to be about 20% higher to get it, but it's coming here in half the time and it's certainty, and it's coming out of either Mexico or Canada. Yeah. Um, and we've been able to uh, uh, refer our clients to those for those various resources as well. See, and I love that idea. Um, now, once upon a time, prior to the financial meltdown, I was pretty much exclusively using furniture manufacturer out of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the dollar was strong. It was, you know, I was getting stuff on time, a great build quality. And it really got to the point where it was almost on autopilot prior to the financial meltdown, which then put them out of business, unfortunately. Uh, but I like that. Is 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 Mexico going to be the next China? I know this is not something we've discussed, but you know, you got me thinking with all of this going on in in Mexico. Are they, they've got a possibility of maybe being the next China for us? Uh, I, I certainly, you know, I certainly do believe so. Um, you know, there there are currently it's a situation where it's hit or miss, so it requires a lot of due diligence, particularly by a firm like ours. Um, you know, we have relationships that because we're Southern California based, we have relationships that are that are in La Jolla and Chula Vista and others that that are American based companies. But they have all of their facilities and warehousing set up uh, in Mexico, uh, very professional organizations that we work with uh, that have gone through the, the stringent process with uh, U.S. Customs to be able to get product over the border without it being you know disassembled or cut in half and destroyed uh, if it's somebody brand new. So. You have to do your due diligence. We're a firm that does that. Uh, everybody that we work with, we, we represent and validate uh, those folks that we work with. But I, I strongly believe that, that Mexico is a, is a tremendous resource for us uh, in terms of, of the work ethic uh, and also the, uh, the production value. Uh, because what most people don't understand is the challenges that have, that have, um, uh, have, that have hit the manufacturing industry on ff &E in Mexico is that if they if they try to specifically go to go just with the hospitality industry hospitality business there's too much cyclicality in terms of ordering you may get an order of a thousand rooms you know one month and an order of 200 rooms the next month and 400 the next month and there's no consistency well the mexican labor laws don't really allow that so you have to work with with suppliers vendors manufacturers that are already in that industry already in that business supplying or manufacturing for other organizations and have a strong supply line to where they can insert your orders into the, that supply line because of the Mexican labor laws requiring full employment of every employee. They generally don't. They discourage part time employment. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, the, the labor force there is very strong and they have to work and they have to be part of that. So, you know, we've been able to you know, source and use those resources again for the benefit our, of our clients and or for our own projects that we develop ourselves, because that's the other aspect of our firm is we do also develop about 20 to 25 percent of our total uh, pipeline for ourselves, uh, not necessarily in hospitality at the moment, but because we are versed in in industrial self storage, 
uh, hospitality, um, uh, senior care living, uh, you, you name the industry, we're involved in it. You know, that's where our smart capital goes, you know, at any given time uh, at that moment in time. But, you know, we're working in all all commercial asset classes right now. Nice. Well, that's the perfect segue. Um, let's talk about the capital markets. You know, they've been shifting. And how is that affecting new builds and hospitality across the country? Uh, I, I've obviously it's had a, I think it's had a dramatic impact, uh, since 12 months ago, 18 months ago, uh, a significant impact. I think the projects that were, that, that were, that were marginal are the ones that are going to be shelved until, you know, a, a different interest rate environment, uh, becomes available. Uh, we've all heard the factor that there's a lot of capital out there, a lot of capital on the sidelines. Yeah. You know, waiting to invest and go in, and that cap, but that capital is very expensive right now. That capital, in, in some cases, on the debt side, is double digits. Uh, you know, where 12, 12 months ago we would have cringed at seven and a half percent on a on a new build loan. Well, today, if you got seven and a half percent, I'd be pretty darn happy if I could get that. And you just factor that in, in in your interest reserves, and then you know you really try to factor in the schedule and the timing on that in terms of being able to work with a firm like ours that brings in general contractors that are very well, well versed in terms of schedule and time management. And that's where we really, really work with the entire design team. So, you know, there is availability of capital. There are, you know, there are private equity firms out there that are providing that. Uh, I've been in the industry for a very long time. I've been clients of a lot of those capital providers, work with them. I can represent to them when I have to go to bat with my clients. Uh, that uh, that we're going to go out there and support them uh, and have them as part of this process. But, you know, it is available. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's a situation where we're seeing uh, today, particularly with the potential of quite a few hotel givebacks, as we've seen in the news lately, uh, that, you know, I think the bigger are going to get bigger, the well-capitalized are going to be able to take opportunities, uh, you know, uh, particularly on like the Ashford portfolio and the portfolio in San Francisco. Uh, and you know the, that that's a lot of the direction that we're seeing. So transactional activity, in a nutshell, uh, on the new build side is going to slow down, but your slam dunk projects are still going to happen. Uh, we're working on a couple of slam dunk projects. The margins just aren't you know as strong as they were when we look at on, look at it on paper today. I agree with you on that, and I I, I think it's going to be rather interesting to follow all of that uh, coast to coast. So. <clears throat> Let's talk about one of my favorite subjects right now, the Class A office building. Okay, <laughs> you know, we've got vacancies at 19% up in the Bay Area, and I'm not bagging on San Francisco because I, I was up there and it looked beautiful to me and it was a lot nicer to walk around than downtown LA was. Uh, I think they're making headway there. I think it's, you know, they're combating all the bad news and they're starting to get some of the good news out there, especially via the hotel association. But, you know, we've, we've got an interesting dilemma. You know, we've gotten a call back and you've got, you know, vacancies at all these class A office buildings. Some of them maybe truly aren't a class A office building anymore due to age. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've got give backs on that side. We've got declining values and so much more. What's the opportunity there for conversion? Because I still think a hospitality product, urban setting is still very viable. Am I right on that? Or am I wrong? Yeah, you're you absolutely. No, I think you're absolutely 100% uh, correct, Craig. It's uh, again, it won't be, you know, it won't be all buildings for for every opportunity. Yeah. There's there's select buildings and, and and I have clients right now uh, and we're looking into these options ourselves where, you know, it may be that 10, 12, 14 story tower uh, on a you know somewhat limited footprint that you're able to, you know, take a look at, do a massing study. Uh, we have architectural relationships that will do, you know, massing studies for us. Take a look at the buildings um, and determine, you know, if, if it's viable and feasible actually to make that conversion. Um, and we'll take a look at options of both hospitality and multifamily, depending on the market. We have some clients that, that want those conversions from office to hospitality. We're doing that in Hawaii right now. Uh, and we have some clients that want office conversion to multifamily. And we're looking at those opportunities for them in both you know, Southern California, Texas, and other parts of the country uh, where, where those, those opportunities may come in. And 
you know, because of the uh, extreme uh, uh, negative valuation that has occurred, you know, I'm looking, we saw in the news where the one property that uh, one lender uh, bought in 2014 for 125 million, uh, they're in a transaction right now to try and close a $29 million. Um, and nobody knows if that transac transaction will actually close. So I think a lot of the a lot of the smart money out there is looking at opportunities where if they can buy the building for what they perceive to be the value of the dirt, uh, it becomes a smart play. Um, and then, you know, you just have to be able to look at the at the market metrics and analyze those market metrics. And we also, again, because we're a full service firm, we, we have an analytical team and analysts on board that are able to take a look at those uh now, take a look at those options for us, run the numbers, run the metrics and determine which one is, you know, which 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 opportunity is best to make those recommendations again for the benefit of our clients. And I think you have to. I mean, you know, I, this is my feeling. OK, um, housing is a drag on the economy as a whole. OK, the expense and everything else. And you've got everybody saying convert, convert, convert all these office buildings and it's got to make sense. And typically it's going to be three things, water in, water out. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it's, it's going to be power and it's going to be heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And those things all have to make sense. And I think a lower rise building with a pretty big footprint uh, basically, you know, keeping the shell and, you know, bringing in new is going to be a lot easier. If you've got a 30 story tower, uh, there's one in downtown LA that, you know, quote unquote is being converted to housing. And I, I just don't see it making sense. Um, now it could be a part of it for luxury or ultra luxury, mm -hmm. which we just need to make units because everybody moves up. If you're in luxury, you're going to go to the ultra, ultra luxury. You know, if 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 you are middle class, you're going to get to luxury and everybody moves up. Just get the units built. They will come. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, we, we concur. We, we absolutely agree with you. And, and you're right on the three tenants that you have to look at. Uh, aside from the market metrics, can is it feasible to actually convert that building? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in one case, we have a uh, we have a steel and concrete moment frame building. Uh, that was built before I was born in the 60s uh, that we're converting over from a uh, an office building to an extended stay uh, extended stay hotel use with one of the major yeah. flags. Um, but, you know, when you do that, you know, you know, what's the big change out plumbing? Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you have a you know, we have 160 plus bathrooms, uh, you know, and plumbing fixtures and showers and everything that goes along with that. We have Thanks. a restaurant, All of it. Yeah. Restaurant on the ground floor. Uh, we're reskinning the building. Uh, because, you know, there's just too much water penetration over the years and, and the rust and corrosion has hit. So we're reskinning the building. Um, and actually, we're, we we did a full blown analysis where, go, where we're going back to a brand new cooled uh, cooling tower with chilled water. Uh, because nice. because when we do the reskinning of the building, this this particular client, again, it's part of the analysis we do. This particular client is a long term 15 plus year hold of this asset. So when you do the analysis, you know, it makes there more sense go. to put in, you know, a more expensive system on the front end that has a 20 to 25 year useful life than okay. replacing your VTAX every five years, you know, five times five X. Not to mention the fact that it's more green. You know, we're not discarding all of the machinery, all of the equipment every five years. Okay. Um, so, you know, we look we look at all of those aspects. I love it. I mean, it makes so much sense. All right, my friend. Are you ready to play our lightning round? Uh, I, I cannot wait. I, I've been salivating over this. I've been, I've, been doing, <laughs> I've been trying to get caught up on all of this, Craig, watching your other podcasts. So let's do it. All right. Producer Danny's going to put two minutes on the clock starting now. Pips. Ooh, opportunities. Ground up. Challenges. Labor. Challenges. <laughs> Favorite band, group, duo, or solo artist? You too. Nice. Favorite movie? Patton. Cable or streaming? Streaming. Number one bucket list item? Oh, 
That's a tough one, Craig. I, I did. I checked one off last month. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, uh, I'd say uh, travel to Southeast Asia. Never been there. Nice favorite sport. Hmm. Golf. Best restaurant in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's the tough one, I think. Maple and Ash. Nice. Vacation hotel or all-inclusive resort? Depends on what part of the world it's in. All right, that's it. 39 seconds left, my friend. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final question. What one thing do you want the hotel community to know about yourself and Creed, please? I think the number one thing to know about us is, you know, our company started doing our work in hospitality. We have a lot of experts in hospitality. It's near and dear to my heart. I'm a second generation hotelier. Uh, so for all of those folks that are listening in your audience and looking at your podcast, if, if you are running into challenges with new builds or renovations uh, where you're running into challenges on, on um, long lead term items, uh, contractors that you can't get under control, uh, you know, challenges with architects, designers, we're here. We're here to assist and help you, uh, whether it is to become an adjunct part of your team uh, because you may not have anyone on that team or be just or just one person on that team. Or even if you have a group, we are a resource, uh, you know, for you to be able to use in your ground up construction, all of your renovation efforts. Uh, you know, we know the brands, we go to the conferences, we stay up to date, we meet with suppliers, we meet with designers, uh, we go to, you know, every industry trade show that we possibly can so that we are able to provide a holistic 360 degree approach to the work that we do for you and provide you the best absolute advice that we possibly can. Perfect. I love it. All right. Now, shameless plug, how can people get a hold of you? Shameless plug, they can reach us at creedgroup.com. Uh, they can reach me specifically uh, at my email address, ted.torres at creedgroup.com. Uh, and or my mobile and only telephone that I have, 480-208-9962. Ted, thank you so much for being a part of the conversation on Click Connect. You've got an open invitation to come back anytime you want. This was a lot of fun. I think it was very informative for our audience. Thank you. Craig, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for having me. And if I don't see you before the lodging conference here in my hometown of Phoenix, Arizona, you know, I will see you then, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, our audience. What a great show. Come on, industry leaders. You know, it was just such a pleasure. I knew you guys would like Ted. And I thank him for joining us today. And I thank you for joining us. And please remember to give our good friend Matt Hostetler a call over at Red Roof Franchising. They'd love to hear from you. You're looking for a new brand or a great alternative. You know, They've, they've got an extended stay product and a new prototype that you're going to love. Um, they've got their economy products. They've also got a soft brand. So if you've got an indie or a boutique hotel, give them add a call. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you over to them and talk to them. It'll be worth your time. So thank you for joining us. Remember, be kind. Share your knowledge. Now go be amazing.